Welcome to the corner of Food and Fun here in Terre Haute, Indiana. It's the Indiana State Coaches Show live from 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. We got a packed house here tonight. This one's going to be a fun one. Indiana State getting ready for South Dakota State, the third-ranked Jackrabbits on Saturday. But a 20-10 win on Saturday on homecoming this past weekend for Coach Mallory and his football Sycamores. First and foremost, Coach, always good to see you here on Monday night, especially after what was a much needed win for your group, but a week where you told your guys all week long, we got to stay together, and if we stay together, we're going to win together. It really felt like Saturday was that great example for your group. Absolutely. It was a great win. It was the first win of the conference and uh, uh, getting on track and uh, keep it going this week. You mentioned staying together, and when you have a half like you did to start off the game trailing 10 nothing, what was that halftime locker room like in terms of the importance of how you knew how you had to address your team and the message to get to where you guys ultimately wanted to go in the second half? Well, our, our coaches did a great job at halftime. Uh, our offense coaches looked at uh, what we could do and uh, how we could do it better. And uh, we have guys on this team that are together and they were confident and uh, got uh, some things corrected, came out second half, played much better offensively. Uh, defensively, we're really playing well. And uh, our coaches just told them, hey, keep doing what you're doing. The offense is going to start clicking and we're going to get this W. And that's exactly what we did. We talked about this earlier on your press conference today. It really seemed like in that game on Saturday, not just a confident Curtis Wilderman, but a very confident team, a very confident offense in that second half. But I do want to start with Curtis because three weeks ago when he had to be inserted for Ryan Boyle when he got hurt on that opening drive, you could say all you want about next man up, next man up. When that time finally comes, especially when you have to replace somebody who has the voice and leadership that Ryan does, you know being a player, that's not an easy role to fill. I think at times that day, Curtis was ready, but you knew that maybe he needed a little bit more time in terms of preparation for a game. On Saturday in that second half, he was confident in every decision he was making. There was no second guessing. It really felt in that short amount of time, you saw a guy who took the backup role to as much as he could, but also when he got his chance, he really made it count on Saturday for you. Well, there's no doubt about it. He, you know, he had gotten some good experience, obviously coming in the Eastern Illinois game and securing a victory. And uh, you can't put a price tag on experience. He got great experience and uh, went out there and did it again. And, uh, you know, uh, we mentioned to our team, you know, we've got a lot of guys that are ready to go and be the next man up. And, uh, you know, I don't want to keep saying this because <laughs> the next thing you know, they go down. But uh, did mention that uh, Curtis is a guy a week ago that when, you know, God forbid if something happens, uh, he would be ready and certainly was. The other thing, too, is you, s you talk about all the time you can't put a price tag on experience, but the other thing you can't put a price tag on is just having a darn good kid. Yep. Um, you know, just talk about the fact that Curtis is a guy who came in, led the team to victory, and then that next week in a bye week, and then ultimately in that preparation for South Dakota, he was back in the backup role and supported Gunner, yet was very supportive of that decision and still was exactly who Curtis has been all along. The importance for you to know that the Curtis Wilderman you always thought he had really has showcased himself over the last three weeks, even when you guys as a staff said, we're going to go with Gunner this week in the starting role, but your role is still extremely valuable. Well, we, we communicated that early on uh, during the bye week. And, uh, you know, obviously it wasn't easy for Curtis, but, uh, you know, we, we told him, hey, we're going to need both of you. And uh, it may be sooner than later, but uh, your time's going to come again and you got to be ready. And that's ex exactly what he did. You know, he just went back to work and uh, got an opportunity and made the most of it. Defensively, being able to hold Western Illinois to one for 15 on third down conversions on Saturday, that's something that you even mentioned about uh, to me before. You don't see that a lot. What was it about what the defense did on Saturday that allowed them to be put into that position to make those plays? Well, I think up front, you know, is where it always starts. Uh, you know, Michael Gant was uh, was wreaking havoc. You know, obviously made a big big stop on fourth down. You felt no, you felt Noakes all day. Uh, you know, those guys were flying around. Our linebackers were making plays. But as a whole, you know, you just felt us. Uh, you felt the speed. You felt the enthusiasm. And uh, they were a lot of fun to watch. After being held without a sack a week prior against South Dakota, in terms of being able to apply that pressure, 
it seemed like all day long, I think Connor Sampson has probably been feeling the pressure even today, mm -hmm. uh, waking up for Western Illinois in terms of that attitude, in terms of the blitz attitude, in terms of the pressure. Was Saturday kind of back to where you guys expect that to be? Absolutely. You know, they've, uh, we've, been, we've been able to do that uh, throughout the year, and uh, you saw it again on Saturday. And uh, guys do a great job uh, playing within the scheme, doing their job, and uh, uh, there was a lot of plays being made out there. You know, we've talked about it on pregame in terms of our pregame conversations right before kickoff before, but Clayton Glasgow being named the MVC, MVFC, uh, when you think of the MVFC uh, Defensive Player of the Week this past week for his efforts over the weekend. It's the third player that you've had in the Missouri Valley Football Conference Defensive Player of the Week. Clayton's been through a lot just during his time here, and I'm sure sometimes for fans when they hear someone like yourself or coaches go, spring was very important, uh, and spring ball is very important. Maybe fans don't understand the importance of spring football why was this past spring so big for Clay and how that's really started to show here in the fall? That's why he's been able to have success is because of what he was able to figure out in the spring. Well, you know, Clayton was a junior college transfer that didn't come till after uh, spring of last year. And so, uh, you know, you know, NCAA doesn't allow you to do much with him over the summer. So we got him uh, in 2018, right before the fall. And uh, last year going through the season, uh, was getting better and better. Obviously, spring is uh, was really important to him. But uh, this fall, he's really, really playing well for us. And uh, you know, I think it has a lot to do with uh, you know the guys surrounding him too. And uh, uh, we've got a great crew of uh, young men on the defensive side, and uh, uh, he fits right in with that group. Overall, defensively, where did you feel your group was able to? improve over the weekend and maybe it's been a group that's been very good so far this year but where did you feel your group took even bigger step, steps forward and bigger strides well I think the depth you know the thing that we keep talking about on both sides of the ball you know I mean we had we had guys going in that just hadn't played a whole lot you know you saw Fred Fabricius go in there do a really nice job you saw Carter Heron go in there do a really nice job Joe Vasquez has been playing uh, and he's continually getting better so Seeing guys that haven't played as much and now their role is getting bigger and bigger. But, uh, you know, seeing the depth develop, uh, you're starting to see that. You're seeing some young guys, some freshmen play on special teams. And uh, we're going to need everybody. And uh, their number's going to be called. they got to be ready to go, and uh, they've been doing that. I don't think there's any surprise that you ended up getting the result that you did on Saturday in terms of I don't think it's any secret. You guys really demanded a lot of the offensive line after a disappointing effort in South Dakota, and whether it was team meetings I know publicly talking with Coach Switz and yourself have to be better, and that was demanded from that group. When you mix in so many new guys like you did in terms of Carter Heron starting for the first time, Freddie Fabricius starting for the first time, all in all, how was that assessment that you felt of that group up front? Well, I think the, the thing we, we talk to our, our, our players about is the expectations at the position and uh, the expectation that we have for our offensive line, no matter who's in there. And, uh, you know, we had some new faces in there, but that wasn't going to be an excuse. We, you know, the expectations to be able to run the football, we were able to do that better in the second half. And uh, if, you're, if your number's called, you've got to be able to play up to that expectation. Alongside head coach Kurt Mallory, I'm Luke Martin here at the corner of Food and Fun and Terre Haute. It's the Indiana State Coaches Show. Indiana State getting ready for South Dakota State this weekend, 1 o'clock on WIBQ. Not going the break just yet, folks. We're going to stick it here just for a little bit longer. Um, I know this stat may be a little bit misleading in terms it's, it's not going to look pretty when I say it, but I know quick starts is what you and the offense are really trying to get better at. Right now, only averaging about 6.6 .6 points per game in your first halves alone this mm -hmm. year. What do you believe Coach Mallory needs to change to get – to make that flip to where you know you got the offense that can get it going, what needs to change to maybe get off the quicker starts, which unfortunately just haven't had to be able to do yet this year? Well, I think being consistent in what we do, uh, we're not going to wave a magic wand. We're going to stay true to who we are. Uh, we're just going to keep getting better, uh, keep going back to work. We're playing good defense right now. It's what we told them at halftime. Hey, uh, defense keep playing well. The offense is on their way, and uh, that's what's going to happen. And uh, we've got a lot of good players on both sides of the football, a lot of guys that have played a lot of football, and, uh, and they're going to keep coming and keep getting better. You know, it's one of those funny things. Coach and I were talking before the show, and, and I was actually looking it up here just to make sure, you know, that my 
researching methods was right. You know, you talked about how you haven't seen a group hold a team to one the 15 on third down conversions. Well, your group actually did it back in your first year here against <laughs> Illinois State. You held the Redbirds the one for 14 on third bat, third down back in 2017. So you've done it before. Well, I don't know if I'll count that one. We didn't win the game. <laughs> yes, so. no doubt. Yeah, that doesn't matter. you got to get the win, right? It doesn't That's matter. Right. It doesn't oh, matter how right. you do throughout the game. Uh, of course, we'll talk about South Dakota State to close up the show, but just briefly, I know it's a program that Coach Stiglmeyer has built. They got it rolling. They're a team that's always going to be in that top five and always talked about not just, of course, contending for our championship in our league, but a team that's going to be a favorite that can win it all and go and be able to make a run in the FCS playoffs. What do you like so much just about what South Dakota State does and, and what's gotten them to this point? Well, I think they do a great job running the football, you know, and obviously that's, that's what we're built around. Uh, they play great defense. They fly around. So uh, those are the things that we're going to always hang our hat on. We're going to run the football, and we're going to fly around on defense. And that's exactly what they do, and that's what we do. Well, it should be a fun one on Saturday. Kickoff going to be 1 o'clock. Coach, we'll catch up with you later on the show to preview more of the Jackrabbits. All right, thank you very much. Once again, that was head coach Kurt Mallory. When we come back, we'll be joined by defensive line coach Mark Smith. You're listening to Indiana State Football and the Indiana State Coaches Show live from 7th and Elm. Welcome back to the Indiana State Coaches Show, live from 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. The Indiana State position coach that everybody has been waiting for to join us here on Monday nights. Mark Smith is our guest. Coach Smith, it's always good to see you, buddy. How are you? Good to see you, Luke. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> well, it's always great to talk with you. Of course, you've been in Terre Haute a few years, not just, of course, here with Coach Mallory, but your first stint under head coach Dennis Rates. What is it about Indiana State that you've enjoyed so much and why when Coach Mallory got this job, it was a job that you were interested in and coming back and being a part of? Well, you know, um, most people might not know, but we, we lived here, my wife and I lived here, and my, the kids, we lived here for um, uh, 17 years, uh, two years at Rose Holman and 15 years at Indiana State uh, back uh, earlier. You now we left uh, for 15 years, and, and it's always kind of like home to us because all three kids were born here. Uh, one of my sons, Eric, uh, never left Terre Haute. He graduated from Indiana State and stayed. Uh, and fortunately, Craig, my other son, my youngest son and youngest child, uh, was uh, invited to join the staff. So we have two of our three children here. And then my daughter lives in Florida uh, when we moved down there for a couple years. So uh, it, it, it seems like home. I'm from Indiana. I grew up in Richmond. I'm a Purdue grad. Um, and so my wife, uh, it was nice to get back closer to her, her mom and uh, her mom actually lives with us right now. Uh, so it, it just it was just an opportunity to get back close to home. Uh, but in the same light, get to work for a man that I, that I respect a lot and uh, I knew would be a good person to work for. Because goals in my life maybe are different than some people. Uh, I want to work for good people, and I want to go to work every day and enjoy going to work. And I knew I would with Kurt, and, and uh, I'm fortunate to be here. Well, you mentioned, of course, your son Craig uh, being the director of football operations as well as director of creative media, director of – everything it seems like uh, within the football offices what has it been like being on staff with your son well you know what it, it's kind of tough when he walks in he tries to tell me what to do <laughs> and and, uh, and 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 I have to listen you know that's the problem you know I mean it used to be I told him to shut up but now now usually when he comes down because Kurt sent him and I have to listen you know so um, it, it no it's been great it's been awesome it, it's it's fun to see uh, your, your, your kids uh, excelling and you get to see them even uh, maybe bring some <laughs> bring some memories back to go oh, dad I remember when you told me about this this and now I'm doing it and you know and it, it's kind of neat to see him grow up it really is of course coach Mallory really preaches family a lot here at Indiana State and not just within your players in terms of Noakes who we'll talk to in a moment Michael Gant as well here later on the show but you guys as a staff, I know it helps, of course, when you have Craig a part of it. But what makes this staff unique for a guy that you've been a part of a lot of different staffs and have probably had different connections in terms of how it felt at the time to be a part of it? What, what makes this staff so special in your eyes? Well, well first off, I think that's – you know, and I've never been a head coach and never wanted to be a head coach. I don't like anything about head coaching other than the paycheck. Because uh, uh, you know, because they, they deal with a lot of headaches that uh, that that I don't want to deal with. I want to recruit on my recruiting, and I, I want to coach my kids. 
Um, but w to me, a, a key is, is, is bringing the right chemistry together of people. Uh, and Kurt has done that just like some previous bosses I had at other places, uh, brought the right group of people together that, uh, that when, when things are going well, it's easy to get along. You know, when things aren't going well, how are you going to handle it? And uh, I think we've got a great group of guys that in a good mix of, of uh, different levels of experience. Obviously, I'm the oldest guy on the staff. And, and, um, and then we, but we've got guys in the middle. And we've got young guys. So uh, I think that's critical. And Kurt's done a great job of, of bringing the chemistry to the staff. And, and also, like he always said, he hired people that he knows will be loyal. And that's critical because when times aren't going well, you want loyal people behind you. Of course, that first year was tough uh, going 0-11. Since you've been through that here with this staff and the majority of you guys have been with each other since that first year, I know there's more work, of course, to be done. And you guys are nowhere near satisfied with where the program is at right now. And I don't mean to imply that when I ask this next question to you. But what are you most proud about about what you guys have done in a short amount of time since 2017? Well, what you're proud of are these kids that are seniors this year. That, uh, you know, that first year, they, 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 took, they took a beating. Uh, you know, and I told, and Mike Gant can attest to this, and Noakes can attest to it too, that, that it was one of the most humbling experiences as a coach I'd ever had. Uh, you know, when you're out getting, uh, getting beat like we were, and it's a credit to those kids that they stuck with us, and it, it's great to see them being rewarded. Uh, so that, that's, that's the most rewarding thing for me right now is to get to see Mike Gant and, and Anoke being successful, but also the team having success. And because uh, they, they, they stuck with us and they didn't have to do that. They, could, they very easily could have bailed. Let's talk about a guy like Michael Gant. What has he meant in terms of the leadership that he brings to your room for a guy who maybe wasn't highly sought after to play, but now he's a massive piece of your defensive line in terms of leadership and production? Well, there's no doubt. I mean, obviously, you know, um, he and Anoke are both – they're the leaders in my room and in, in the defensive line room, and Michael probably even more so uh, because Mike, Mike came from nowhere. Uh, you know, Anoke was recruited, was on scholarship here and, and all those things when I got here. And, um, and on the flip side of that, Mike Gant started at St. Joe and transferred back home for personal reasons more than anything um, and, um, and walked on. And very easily could have hung it up during that 0 and 11 and, and, and things like that. But uh, Mike Gant is, is one of the most uh, one of my favorite stories I'll ever tell uh, about former players, just because of what he's endured and what he still does. I mean, he, you talk about a responsible young man that takes care of his business. Uh, that his picture's in the dictionary for that. Anoke, of course, went through a lot of injuries during his time here at Indiana State, specifically last year getting hurt against you and I, knocked out the rest of the year, couldn't play, couldn't be a part of it. I know he had a frustrating fall camp as well, trying to continue to get back to being 100%. For someone who was out for so long to have the impact that he's had to where I think the fans, they watch Noakes this year, they probably go, man, that's a guy that looks like he hasn't missed a beat. What's allowed a Noke for a guy who has missed a beat, who's been out, but when he got back, he was ready for the opportunity that – you and your staff presented to him. Well, one thing, one thing Anoke did a great job of that whole time, and any time he's been out, uh, as long as they allowed him to be around, he was very involved and very active. He, he never uh, separated himself from the team. Uh, even, even though he knew he couldn't play, he was in the weight room with the young guys on Friday mornings, uh, you know, lifting with the, the so-called non-travel guys or the young guys on the team. Uh, so for first and foremost, he always stayed involved with the program. And, and I always told him, I said, I mean, you're a coach for me on the sideline. You know, you're not, you're not at the game. You're not, not going to be a spectator. You're a participant, you know. So, you know, keep your eyes open and, and help me with, with things because uh, I don't see everything very well anymore. <laughs> you mean your eyesight's not as good as it used to be? Uh, I didn't say that. <laughs> your, your, your hearing sometimes, I heard, may go in and out from time What'd to you time. What would you say? <laughs> That's right. I'll, I'll, tur I'll turn your volume up just a little bit, Coach Smith. Mark Smith is our guest here at the corner of Food and Fun, the Indiana State Coaches Show, Indiana State football game, ready for South Dakota State this weekend. We're not sending them away yet. I'm just reminding folks uh, who are listening here online to us. But uh, let's get to your group in terms of the depth that you have. You know, we talked about Noakes. We talked about Michael Gant. But there's a lot of young guys, too. A guy like Lucas Hunter from Center Grove has had a lot of reps, and it's been a guy that you and Coach Wilson have not flinched at all in terms of being able to put in there. It was a group that we caught up in fall, ca fall camp, and you were like, Luke, this is going to be a group that I can rely on in terms of throwing out multiple guys. 
Do you feel that that's been the case as the year's gone on? Well, I don't think there's any doubt. I mean, uh, this past weekend we played uh, we played ten guys. Uh, and when I say played 10 guys, they played in crucial times. It wasn't okay at the end of the game, cleanup time or in that. We played 10 different guys, and the minimum reps that somebody got was eight, eight reps. Chris Reed had eight. Uh, Anoka had the most at 40-some. Michael Gant was around 24, and that was probably about 22 too many, but we, we, we snuck him <laughs> in there. Uh, but, uh, you know, but uh, anyway, no, I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that Brad and I talked about way back when, and when I say Brad, Coach Wilson, uh, when, when we first got together and, and the importance of, of having a defensive line that can rotate people because you got to stay fresh here. you got to have those guys that can play hard. And we even tried to do that through the lean years a little bit where we ha didn't have a chance to build that room. Uh, but I, I've told these guys numerous times that the, you guys have been built for this. This, this room has been put together specifically for what we're trying to get done. And, uh, and and we're very proud of that as a staff because this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the strengths of the team, and and, uh, and that's what we built it to do. Uh, and uh, good news is, you know, bad news is we lose Mike next year, but after that we've got everybody back. I know Tony Williams is a senior and is a guy that is a huge contributor to our program, maybe not so much on the field, but uh, I don't lose a lot. You know, so there's a lot of guys coming back a year ago, but uh, this 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 room has been put together for that reason. And yeah, we do play a lot. South Dakota State, or excuse me, South Dakota, we played 11 guys and played them on a regular basis, uh, just because of the no huddle and trying to keep them fresh. In terms of improvement, what did you think was the biggest area of improvement from South Dakota to Western Illinois in a week? Well, uh, I, you know, it, I think I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that uh, the, the guys got back to playing like we should be able to play up front. Uh, I'm not saying that that uh, that, we, that we played terrible, but we didn't play what we can do. We, we I didn't feel us in that game in South Dakota. And uh, in order to win football games, you got to feel your front. You got to feel the front on offense. You got to feel the front on defense. And uh, when 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 those guys up front play just like you saw Saturday, it's a fun thing to watch. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, with the pressure that Brad was bringing and adding the linebackers that mixed with Clayton and, and, and Jonas and, and, and uh, Matt Thompson and, and guys like that, I mean, it was a fun game to watch. I know mean, we, were, we, were, we were hanging right there, and, and we knew the offense would get going. Uh, you know, Switz and, and those guys have been fighting over there just to, you're keeping that thing rolling and putting new guys in. And uh, you, you got to believe that. And that it, was a, it was a great team win. You know, Jerry Nunez hitting those, those two field goals were huge, um, playing good defense. And then, uh, obviously, the offense kicked it in second half and, 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 and put 20 points on the board. So that, that, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. This weekend, South Dakota State comes calling, third-ranked team in the country. They were the third-ranked team in the country last year when you guys went to Brookings and took that team to overtime. They've lost Heron Christian, who's one of the best quarterbacks, not just in South Dakota State history, one of the best in the league of the Missouri Valley Football Conference history. They now have Jabori Gibbs. It seems like they've been more of a running attack this year than maybe they were last year where Christian liked to throw it a lot. In just your early preparation, Coach Smith, and preparing for the Jackrabbits from your guys' position in terms of creating pressure, what are the differences with Jabori Gibbs kind of leading the charge now compared to where a year ago it was Christian? Well, I, I think it's one thing. You know, obviously, when you bring in a young, new quarterback, and this kid's very talented. He's 6'3", 230 pounds, and, and uh, they're not asking him to be the, the feature piece. Uh, you know, he, he can manage the game. They'll put him in great situations of throws he can make. Uh, but they're, they're, they're putting this solely on their offensive line and those running backs. They're, they're averaging 200, almost 250 yards a game rushing, uh, 160 yards passing. And, and uh, we, you know, we've already taught as a defensive line that, that uh, for us to have success in this game, we've got to take the runaway. And that's how we're gearing everything up, how we're going to practice and how we've set up the defense at this point is that we're going we're gonna to stop this run game. And, and if the quarterback has to throw to beat us, let's see if he can do it. You know, every game – in this league is always big and any team you play in this league is really really good even a team like over the weekend in western illinois who may have had an 0-5 record they're much better than what their 0-5 record indicates but you've been around college football a long time you know what it's like when you have a top ranked team a top five team come into your building and what kind of excitement that can bring just the opportunity and what it means for these guys like an okay and michael and the rest of the team this weekend of what kind of opportunity they do have in front of them on Saturday. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right, Luke. We should have no problem motivating this football team because uh, obviously this is a, a, a well-respected, well-coached, well, well -coached, 
uh, team that has a high ranking right now that we have an opportunity to play at home. Uh, and I don't think there'll be any any problem getting our players motivated to play this game. And uh, and for the most part, they they've been good about that all year, no matter who we play. Uh, so uh, it it should be an exciting week of preparation. Uh, and then uh, obviously the game day should, uh, if you practice well, then games become become fun and slow. I know it was kind of unveiled a little bit and released in your interview with your son back in the one on one with dad segment with Craig Smith. Uh, did you get a wish sandwich here tonight at 7th and Elm? I know the staff understands what a wish sandwich means. I don't think the fans that are here maybe. Can you explain that a little bit, what a wish sandwich was that uh, Craig would have a lot growing up? I, I do know one thing. The Wilson family understands what a wish sandwich <laughs> is because I explained it to those two boys early on. Uh, in fact, I, I think, uh, I, I think was it Logan who was asking Brady one day, he said he had a bagel and he didn't have anything to put on it. He goes, hey. That looks like a wish bagel, you know, and I, I felt pretty good. I'm affecting Wilson's kids, you know, so uh, it's, it's been good. But, uh, no, a wish sandwich basically is, is something, and, and Craig uh, brought it up, that I used to tease the kids back, you know, maybe sometimes that we're living towards the end of the, the paycheck a little bit, and, and uh, we had some bread, but we didn't have any meat. So we just had a couple slices of bread, and we wish we had some meat. So it was a wish sandwich. That's what that was. So, anyway. Uh, and that's not true. I, they, they, they're, you, you look, you look at my family. They're not underfed. So, <laughs> well, I got to tell you something. I know how much you really enjoy doing interviews with me and doing this opportunity. I actually have a gift for you tonight, as a surprise. I know this is not going to be any surprise to the football staff that is here tonight, but I got you some mayonnaise <laughs> for your wish sandwich. That you can have. You could probably use it here tonight. I'm sure Tom will let you use it here as well. So, Coach, I know how much you love doing that. I, I, I hope that means something to well, you. Well, you know what? Uh, the, uh, other than, than, than my wife and my kids and football, mayonnaise may be the next thing I love the most. <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, I can tell you that uh, uh, I appreciate this. This is like Christmas. Well, so. Coach, I know you'll appreciate a win on Saturday. Get back to work tomorrow. I'll always appreciate the time. Luke, thank you very much, and uh, we, supre we appreciate all you do for us because, uh, brother, we need all the help we can get. So. <laughs> appreciate it, Coach right, Smith. Thank that you. was Mark Smith. When we come back, it's an OK Moala. Join us here on the Coaches Show. You're listening to the Indiana State Coaches Show live from 7th and Elm. And welcome back to the Indiana State Coaches Show live from 7th and Elm Bar and Grill, the corner of food and fun. Big thank you to Mark Smith for taking some time and joining us. We'll have head coach Kurt Mallory to wrap up the show. Michael Gant still to come as well. But now it's Anoke Mawala who joins us. Noakes, always good to see you, my man. I'm sure, especially for you, probably feels a little bit better after a win like you guys had over the weekend. It's definitely a good thing. Um, I mean, it's always good to be here with you, and it's uh, my first time being out here at 7th and Elm, but it's a little nerve-wracking <laughs> you know, with interviews. But. They're, they're not going to heckle you, I promise. <laughs> they're, they're good people here off to everywhere uh, throughout 7th and Elm. They treat me great every Monday. Um, but just for you guys, after I know a week where it was a result that you guys did not want in Vermilion, South Dakota, you guys really felt that was going to be a game that you guys could go and get, how essential was it for you guys, specifically just from a defensive perspective, to put that week away and to get back to playing, as what Coach Smith said, to the capability and the style of football that you guys know you're capable of playing? I mean, it's always tough coming off a, you know, a bad loss. And, uh, I mean, Coach Smith, uh, he just called us out all the time and um, from this past game. And he called us out and told us to step up and he's just telling us good players got to play good. And, I mean, I just kind of put that pressure on myself in the weeks of practice and just uh, tested myself every practice and came out and we performed and we won. So that was a good thing. We mentioned you've been through a lot of adversity during your time here at Indiana State. What has that done, Noakes, to really help get you prepared for a year like this year where it really seems like watching you play, you're playing as well as you've ever had during your time here at Indiana State? It was hard. Um, you just really have to dig deep and find yourself. I mean, you go through – rough patches and you eventually find yourself and that's all that um, I could do and just keep coming back day after day even if I was injured or not playing and just encouraging those young guys and just trying to take any role that I had at the time so we have Makai Ware on the show uh, a week ago and Makai was someone who missed all of last year you missed the majority of a year ago even though you're there and you're on the sideline I'm going to repeat a question I had to Makai last week to you I know you were thrilled to 
see the team have success at the end of the year and win those five games. But how much did it hurt, too, to know that, yes, you're there, you're supporting. I still remember watching you with a towel running on the field after the South Dakota win mm -hmm. uh, in triple overtime. You were there and you were always supportive of your teammates. But inside, what was just that like for you knowing – you weren't contributing. You you weren't on the field playing when you know you could have despite an injury. I mean, it hurt, but I just used it as motivation just to keep working and keep my head down, coaching those younger guys, helping Coach Smith whenever needed, and just coming to meetings and, uh, I mean, playing my role, like I said before, and just continuing that throughout the season. Why do you feel that's important to do in terms of when you were out to teach those younger guys? Because I think, you know, not to, you know, not to name names, but, you know, there are some guys, whether it's here or other places I've been, where they get hurt and you don't see them for the rest of the year. They just kind of go and they do their own thing. For you, you were not one of those guys. And even during fall camp this year when maybe you were struggling and trying to get back to being healthy, you were still a presence on that sideline, always with your defensive group. Why was that just so important for you? And what do you think has led you to be wired that way? I just want to see my teammates successful, and then eventually that leads to being the team successful. So just having that in my head and just pushing through and helping whoever I can whenever needed, I mean, especially our position group, and I just want to see those people successful. You know, I would think, you know, when you said you were nervous getting getting on the show a little bit with all these people watching, I mean, for a guy that came from a big family, it's not like you're an only child, right? I mean, describe the family you have. It's a pretty big one up there north of the state. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of us, a lot of mouths to feed, so <laughs> – a lot of wish sandwiches, but it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so you knew what the wish sandwich was like did, growing up, I didn't did, you? I Penn. did. Uh, you know, of course, your brother Paul, uh, for those that may not know, plays at Notre Dame. Uh, and I know you have a lot of other talented siblings as well. Just describe the you guys as a family, the Moala family, and what makes you guys so close because it seems like no matter today – on whatever platform it is, I always see Paul reaching out to you, you reaching out to Paul, and then vice versa to your other brothers and to the other sisters that you have. I mean, we've, we've, we've struggled a lot throughout, you know, our years as family. So, I mean, that's, that's brought us to be close, super close. And, I mean, we've always relied on each other for a lot of things. Um, I mean, we, we weren't very social, I'm not going to lie, when we were younger. <laughs> so we just had each other and we just hung out with each other. So, I mean, that bond is always there. And, I mean, I always fall back on it whenever I need it. Yeah, I used this story on the ESPN broadcast over the weekend, but you're, of course, not the only Moala. That's war number 13. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of just uh, go into that a little bit and how many of you wear number 13 and <laughs> just kind of what, what sparked that um, because obviously you weren't 13 your whole career mm -hmm. here at Indiana State. Uh, so my dad played for the Tongan National Rugby, f rugby Team, and uh, he wore number 13. So uh, my little brother, Paul, who plays at Notre Dame, he uh, switched his number to 13, senior year of high school, and then continued it on. And um, so I decided just to switch my number to 13 and just carry that on for a little. And uh, it's me that's number 13, my little brother, Paul, at Notre Dame, and then my little sister, who is a sophomore in high school. She wears 13 as well, volleyball. Man, just 13s everywhere. Yeah. At least your, your parents could probably just get one 13 jersey and probably wear it to exactly. most of the events, right? Yep. Have to change the colors a little bit, the color mm -hmm. schemes, but at least from the numbers standpoint, it doesn't have to change a lot. Anoke Moala is our guest here on the Indiana State Coaches Show. No, it's just this weekend against South Dakota State. What kind of opportunity do you guys have as a football team this week against a really good team? Um, we just have to go out there. I mean, we get to prove that we can hang with tougher teams, you know, Every team is good in our conference, but we have – we can make a statement here with this this upcoming game against South Dakota State. I mean, it's it's here. It's home. So, I mean, that's to our advantage as well. What do you feel you guys specifically on that defensive line got to do, have to hammer home this week to have success on Saturday? I mean, we just have to stop the run. I mean, play how we've been playing these last couple of weeks. And, uh, I mean, just stop the run and stay in our gaps and do all of that. I mean, everything else will take care of itself. Do you like mayonnaise as much as Coach Smith? I don't think I like it as much as him. <laughs> you don't. Mayo guy. Well, I don't think he's going to I don't think he's going to share his mayonnaise with anybody. I think <laughs> it, how, how, how long do you think you give that mayonnaise jar last in his office? Maybe a week. Maybe a week. <laughs> well, we'll check up next week on the coach's show to see if it's still intact. Noakes, appreciate the time as always, man. Thank you, Luke. Once again, that was an okay Moal. When we come back, it's Michael Gant join us. And then head coach Kurt Mallory to wrap up the show. You're listening to the Indiana State Coaches Show live from 7th and Elm.
Welcome back to the Indiana State Coaches Show, live from 7th and Elm Bar and Grill. Big thank you to Anoke Mawala joining us here just a moment ago. We had Mark Smith earlier on the show. We'll wrap up the show with head coach Kurt Mallory. But now it's the pride of Terre Haute, Terre Haute North product. Michael Gant is joining us here on the show. Michael, how are you doing, buddy? I, I noticed you don't have your boys here tonight. I was a little disappointed in that. Yeah, <laughs> they're at their grandma's house, but uh, yeah. I didn't know if they'd behave in here or not. So. <laughs> didn't know they'd behave, so didn't bring them enough. But, uh, Michael, how much fun just has it been for you? I mentioned, of course, you being from here, playing for Coach Barrett at Terre Haute North, the Barretts at Terre Haute North. How much pride do you have every time you put on that Indiana State jersey and knowing you're playing college football in your hometown? Uh, it's a, a, a lot of pride. I got a lot of pride because uh, Coach John and Coach Barrett, they both played here at Indiana State. So I'm kind of carrying on their legacy. A lot of people don't know, but those guys are like kind of like fathers to me because I grew up without one. So um, it's kind of like carrying on their legacy by playing at Indiana State. Coach Smith brought up just your work ethic and what you've brought. What would you say has been the most challenging time during your career playing football? It may be a time that you look at and say, that was my most challenging, but it's also my most rewarding because it's gotten to me to where you are right now playing at Indiana State. My most challenging time is probably uh, sitting behind guys two years ago and last year sitting behind Rex and sitting behind Norvell. But um, – it helped motivate me to be the player that I am today and just to keep working and keep my head down and keep working hard to get where I'm at, where I'm at today. I think, you know, Coach Smith, of course, is really hard on you guys just in terms of day-to-day -day and the structure that you guys have, the drills that you do. But I think that's also why you guys are one of, if not the most disciplined position group on the team. What have you learned most about in your time under Coach Smith and how he has helped you also get to this point? Uh, Smitty's helped me grow as a man, not only as a player, but as a man. Uh, the most thing that I remember from learning from him is early is on time. We're always 15 minutes early to everything. So if we got to be there at 1, we're there at 1245. And if you're there at 1250, you're late. So that, that's, that's the biggest thing that I learned from Smitty over the past three years. For you guys as a defensive line group, that – has been able to have success this year. Last week, I believe, was your third game this year where you've had three sacks or more. That's more than you guys had all of last year. You only had two games of three sacks or more a year ago. What is it about this group up front that you like and why you guys have been able to have so much success here early on in the year? We're a tight-knit group. We're all really, really close. And um, Coach Mathari preaches rushing as one, more pass rushing against other teams. I feel like we do that very well. We all rush as one because we all have very good chemistry together. Like we, we don't just hang out at football. We hang out outside of football. Like me and Noakes, best friends, we hang out almost every day and on the weekends too. So our chemistry is what builds, builds us as a defensive line and makes us good. I know the older crowd may not understand this next question, but are you better than an okay at Fortnite? I am not. I, I'm not. Oh, I, I know. Okay, you're honest. Uh, yeah. Noakes man, is no honesty. Yeah, Noakes I mean. is really good at Fortnite. <laughs> I, I'm not a bit. I'm not a big video game guy. I don't really have time. Okay, for that. there you go. That's that's a good way to at least support your position. Here, yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I don't think Noakes plays that game a lot though. I think he only plays it like once, like every two weeks, maybe. Yeah, probably. Probably yeah. once every day. Yeah, maybe <laughs> once every hour uh, throughout the day uh, when he's not in class. Yeah. Um, you guys as a group, you know, Coach Smith talked about that depth, being able to play 10, 11 guys. For you as one of those leaders, what's impressed you about some of those younger guys who have gotten in and who have been able to get some playing time to give you guys some rest and make you guys fresher for the snaps that you have to play? I think they all stepped up a lot, especially Lucas Hunter. He's a guy who can come in and, I mean, he can pass rush. He can he can stop the run. He's a very smart guy, smart kid. Um, also – out to Nobles, he's been doing really well. He's really stepped up. I mean, he does a lot for us, not even not only on Saturdays, but during the weekday at practice. I mean, he plays offensive line scout team. He does defense scout team for us, and he does reps with us. So I think those two guys have really, really stepped up, and, and they understand their role. There's not a lot of complaining. They understand their role, and they know what they have to do to get their job done. Now, I've mentioned your boys at the start of the broadcast. Of course, you being a father. Uh, I know got engaged over a year ago. Um, just talk about your family uh, in terms of your boys, in terms of being engaged, and 
what that means to you and how maybe all those connections have really helped you out on the football field? Um, being in, <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard question. Being engaged is tough. I mean, I was really nervous when I, when I asked. <laughs> she, I mean, she's here, but um, it's, it's pretty nerve wracking. And I've had kids since I was, I think I was 18 when I've had both of those, both of the kids. So it really uh, helped me. I had to grow up really fast. I already had to grow up fast when I was growing up with my mom, but to help her raise the four others of my siblings. But having two kids has really, matu really matured me. And I think I've grown a lot from them too. And I've learned, le learned a lot from them too also. They're only five and four, which you'd <laughs> be surprised if you learn anything from those kids. But I've learned a lot from <laughs> them. So, and I think that's uh, built me as a man and built me as a player because like Coach Smith always says, I handle my business well. I'm very responsible, and that's, that's because of them. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't be as responsible. Yeah, I, I think that's another point, you know, for those that don't know, you know, always see you out of practice, always see you everywhere. But the one thing I always see you is with your boys. And you kind of hinted at it when you first were talking about football and getting involved, how you didn't really have much of a presence uh, with a father figure growing up. How has that helped you to make sure that you want your two boys to have something that maybe you didn't have to grow up? I, I always promised myself whenever I did have kids that I would always always be in their life because it was it was really hard growing up without that and it it uh how do I say this it kind of made me grow a lot of hatred in my heart and it's it's not good to have hate in your heart for no reason but that's what football helps that with that too <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no question <laughs> and you guys will get that chance on Saturday get South Dakota State. What are you just most looking forward to about this opportunity that you guys have, third-ranked team in the country coming in, and a chance for you guys to get above 500 in league play and just get another win? Um, I'm looking forward to the challenge. Honestly, I don't. I think we can play with anybody. I don't care who it is, if they're ranked first or if they're ranked third, especially defensive line-wise. Um, we're one of the best groups on the team, and I feel like if we play how we, how we know how to play, it will be a good game. Michael, look forward to seeing you playing on Saturday, and not just this Saturday. I know everybody here, too, always loves to see you play, and thanks so much for always representing Indiana State football in the first-class fashion that you do, buddy. Appreciate thanks, you. Once again, that was Michael Gant. We're going to take a break. When we come back, it's head coach Kurt Mallory to wrap up the show. You're listening to the Indiana State Coaches Show live from 7th and Elm. This is Kurt Mallory, and you're listening to Indiana State Football on WIBQ 97.9 FM. Big thank you to all of our guests and everybody here tonight. Join us at the corner of Food and Fun at 7th and Elm, Indiana State and South Dakota State on Saturday, 1 o'clock kick right here on WIBQ. You can listen to the Pepsi countdown to kickoff at noon. All right, Coach, so you look at the Jackrabbits. We've talked about this game earlier on your press conference. We've talked about a little bit here on the show with all the guests that we've had. What's going to be the biggest challenge on Saturday? What do you think are going to be some of the biggest things that you got to be able to execute on to know to beat a third-ranked team in the country? Yeah, we got to stop the run, and we got to run the ball. And uh, it's going to come down to those two things. Uh, uh, getting back to what we're due or what we're made of. And uh, I know we'll uh, accept the challenge and get back to work tomorrow. You know, one of those things you always mention about how it's next man up, regardless of where those injuries may come. Your group has been tested so much already mm -hmm. in terms of those injuries. How do you feel that it's made you a better football team? And, and you don't wish that at all and don't want that to continue throughout the season. But how has that made this team better? and why that makes you guys a confident bunch going into Saturday. Well, I think, you know, they've, you know, the guys have bought into that. Uh, that's how we practice. That's how we go about our business, whether it's in the off season, whether it's during the season. But everyone's got a valuable role, and your number can be called at any time. And in the game of football, it happens. It happens everywhere. It's happened across the country and how you respond to it. And, uh, you know, our team has responded. You know, they responded last year to it. They're going to respond this year to it. And uh, we're just going to keep on rolling and, uh, and continue to have a good year. I know you interact with everybody else here at the show as we go on throughout the hour, but I'm sure it's got to bring you a lot of pride to be able to hear guys like Anoke, to hear guys like Michael talk so proudly about their time here and how they really do represent your program. 
in a first-class fashion. Oh, absolutely. Uh, those two have done a wonderful job. They take care of business off the field, take care of business on the field. And uh, really proud of what they've done, what they've accomplished, and what they're going to continue to do uh, beyond football and beyond here at Indiana State. They're, uh, uh, they're going to be very successful. You met Michael mentioned how he was nervous when he engaged. Uh, when you asked Lori the question, how nervous were you? Uh, probably just as nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, yeah. You were just as nervous, huh? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. No question. Uh, no question. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you were. And look how it's turned out, yeah, uh, you and sure. Lori. Um, Coach, just as we kind of put a finishing touch here on the show, um, the keys really for your group on Saturday to be able to pull out that win against South Dakota State. Well, I think we always talk about, you know, what we got to do up front. It's going to start up front, defensive line, offensive line, uh, and everyone doing their job, you know, and we're going to get some guys back this week, and uh, we just got to continue to move forward. Got a great uh, opportunity this weekend at Memorial Stadium. And you mentioned it at Memorial Stadium. They came out to support you over the weekend. I'm sure it wouldn't hurt uh, to see a lot of the Sycamores come back out on Saturday, would it? That's right. We need everybody and uh, supporting us, uh, cheering us on, and let's uh, let's push to get a victory this weekend. Coach, good luck this week and getting preparation, and we hope that it's a clean bill of health as you prepare, and let's have some fun on Saturday. Thanks, Luke. Once again, that was head coach Kurt Mallory. Big thank you to all of our guests here tonight from the corner of Food and Fun in Terre Haute for defensive line coach Mark Smith, for defensive lineman Anoki Mawala and Michael Gant, for head coach Kurt Mallory, I am Luke Martin. You can join us this Saturday, Pepsi Countdown to kickoff at noon with kickoff for Indiana State and South Dakota State at 105. For Dennis Porter, back in the studios on Wabash Avenue, you've been listening to the Indiana State Coaches Show live from 7th and L.